Okay, so we have a model. Um, we have a model which is essentially a data-driven engine. It works really well, but what it's basically doing is keeping what well, are fairly traditional ideas going. So a website, you know, websites have been around for 10, 15 years or something. Um, ours are now working really efficiently. So the more content we put in, the more it works. But that's not really why we do it. The, the main reason that you need a data engine is because you don't know what the future holds. And the future is digital and, and you know, just get over that. Um, but essentially every single day, somebody out there has either invented a new thing or they've invented a new thing a while ago and all of a sudden somebody's come up with a new way of using it. So um, I'm trying to think of an example, but if you look at all the things that you could do on a mobile phone, there are probably 20 ways of using it that you just never thought of before it was invented. And that's the thing that you need digital to, to be able to respond to, is not what you think, not what you're making better and better and better because it's what you've always used to. So not a horse and cart that you make faster and faster and faster, but what happens when a car comes along? And that's, that's the sort of thing that you need digital ready for. And the only real way to react to it is to have your data in nice, clean units, good data. So you need people in the, in the departments to, to be managing their data, but they need to be managing it to know that it's gonna be created as something that can be piped out to anything that needs it. And that's what the, the real beauty of a data engine, which is effectively just a name for a group of APIs, but the means by which you get raw raw stuff into raw data is the collection management or the shop and so on. The data into a form that the, the that can be used in digital situations is what we do in digital media basically. So um, making it available means that when a system comes along that needs it, you can react to it. And and if you if you react to it by putting things manually into it an old way, you're you're screwed basically because you can't you can't make that do this. Whereas if it's just pure data, so you every object record is in a fairly standard format that you can just pump out. And even if the standard isn't, isn't a, uh, a full you know, um, collections type standard, it is in a portable standard. And that portable standard can be uh, put through some form of translation software that will say, uh, just literally a plugin really. So if it, if it comes out and that author feels there, but this thing needs to display it over there because it's coming off the back of a new type of camera, then fine, that's good, here's our data, you give it to that, and whoever develops that software for that type of camera can just say the fields you're talking about match to this field and so on. But if you don't have that engine that serves up your data, then you've got to rewrite your software every time you start, and that, that, that's the, the, the problem with not doing it. So you have a, a layer of applications with, with data in under here, and you have a whole other service that you want to deliver, but there's a thing in the middle, like a services layer, if you want to put it in IT terms, and that's the bit that needs to, that your organization has to own, it has to develop, and it has to make sure that it controls. Because any one of these systems, you might decide that you just don't like it anymore. It doesn't do what you need for this job it does in here. So if it's a, say it was a till system, and, and the whole concept of tills went out the window because everyone buys it on their phone or something, then you might not even need that system anymore because you don't need a printer system because nobody prints anything because they just show you a phone with a, something on it or they tweak it by some sort of connector, you just unplug that system, but this system is still there. So if anything else comes in that you didn't predict, so there's a new bit of data that you have to produce for, I don't know, 3D modeling or something like that, a 3D modeling repository, there's a new standard that suddenly appears that makes 3D fractalization possible. Let's just imagine it can happen. It probably won't, but let's say it does. That will come out, that will be a totally different new thing that comes out, but it will basically have standardized fields. There will, there will be some things that come out and then you will just need, we will just need to make that into, a, into available pockets of units of content. So whatever one fractalized object is that allows you to see it in infinite detail backwards and forwards, a tiny vector type thing will occur for each object. And then once you've standardized that, then you, make, you feed them into the machine and the machine can pump it out into standard things that other systems can use and then they can be developed upon. So, so it will evolve, it's not fixed, but, but ultimately the concept is fixed, which is this is not, is not directly a part of any of these systems. It's, it's a separate thing that serves it in the same way that the services are not part of those systems either. So this service, in order to get your information, you, know, you can build what you like, but when it needs that data, it comes from here. And that's, that's broadly the model that works. And you can drop the services in the same way that you can drop the systems, but you can't drop the engine.